Okay, final part. Steve fires a 17 kilogram uh, cannonball at a velocity of 22 meters per second horizontally from a 500 kilogram cannon. If the cannon resides on a frictional surface, what is the velocity at which the cannon moves backwards? So this is kind of a story, and you kind of have to uh, have a, a background in what cannons do. So first, let's draw a cannon. Now this one's just going to be uh, simply a pipe. So basically, what a cannon is is it's going to be, if you can think of it in the most simplest of context, it's going to be a big pipe which at one end is closed. Now the other end, it doesn't look like it, but this one actually is going to be open. There's an open end. <laughs> and you need that open end for the cannonball to come out. <laughs> Alright, so inside the cannon is a cannonball, first and foremost. So here's our cannonball. Great. And behind that cannonball, we're going to put uh, gunpowder. We'll make it purple. So you make a, put a bunch of gunpowder in there. And the, the, the common thing what happens is you have a fuse which is going to be nice and fun, because what it does is it takes fire to our cannon, our gunpowder. And when it burns down, it goes in there and ignites the uh, gunpowder, and the gunpowder expands and shoots the cannonball out. Hopefully you guys all have a, a pretty good idea of what this is going to do. It's going to shoot out here very fast and, and go destroy somebody's boat or their house or maybe kill a cow or something. So, but usually a cannon for some reason, or for many reasons, for convenience, is going to be on like wheels or, or something. It's on like a platform. And that platform is on wheels, so we'll get it some wheels. So this platform could, in fact, roll backwards. It's a good-looking cannon. So here's our cannon. Excellent. So now, let's get into the nuts and bolts. And initially, we assume our cannon's at rest. It's just sitting there. You usually don't carry a cannon around and run with it. It's, it's sitting there. It's stationary. So the initial momentum of our, the initial velocity of our cannon velocity of cannon uh, initial is going to be zero. It's stationary. And our cannonball is inside of it here. So the velocity of our cannonball, which I'll call B for the ball, initial is also zero. So that means our momentum is zero. Momentum before, P before, equals zero. So we're going to shoot. And afterwards, something crazy happens. Uh, the cannonball comes flying out. So let's see if we can grab the cannonball. It's going to come flying out of here, out of the open end. And we can now see that it's going to have a velocity. It's going to have a velocity going this way. But also, conservation of momentum tells us that our cannon is going to have some velocity going this way. Well, we can actually, with uh, momentum, conservation of momentum, we can, we can calculate that. So the, the thing tells us that the mass of our cannonball mass of our ball equals, um, what did it say, uh, 17 kg. And it says that the velocity of our cannonball final equals 22 meters per second. And it tells us that the mass of our cannon is 7 or 500 kg. Well, this is just conservation of momentum. We know the momentum before, though. Momentum before is what? It's zero. Equals our momentum after, which is going to be the mass of our cannon, velocity of our cannon final, plus mass of our cannonball, velocity of our cannonball oh, final. So the crazy thing is this, is that um, we have all these things, or at least most of them, we have the masses, and we have this velocity of our cannonball, which means we only we don't know this. We know that it sets it's equal to zero. So, great. Just plug in your calculator and software. Great, guys.